Hi, am I in the air? Do I have everybody's attention now? Do I have everybody's attention now? John, I got you. John, Do I have everybody's Sunday attention night. now? You put them cameras on me, then you must be willing to get that heart touch. This a must see feeling. The news ain't good, then it must be villain. So I say it's bad grounded. I don't trust these feelings. Spread across your nose, and I'm on your air. Highest max on the cloud. Am I in the air? Sunday nights, prime time. I flex my better Voltron transform to DX Don. Mega and Austin. You probably think I'm nice, cause I slow like a stream to your wireless device and the smoke full of steam. On any given night, I'll show up like a piece of any given slice. Uh, and for the latest and what is best, Bob, I tune in and tune the rest out. Done, you gotta tell them, am I in the clear? Is this thing gone? Am I on the air? On the air. Well, what is going down, everybody? Welcome back to another brand new edition of Am I on the Air? My name is Don Mega, and I'm your host, and I'm so happy that you're here to join me here tonight to get caught up with all the latest and the greatest when it comes to entertainment news, television, movies, reviews, non-spoiler. We got your hookup right here on Am I on the Air? We are broadcasting live from the Red Dragons Radio Studios. It is season 26. It is episode 5, and tonight's show is titled Gods and Monsters. We're broadcasting live here on January the 31st. It is a Tuesday, and that was done on purpose. So, yes, we normally broadcast on Monday nights, but it's a Tuesday, and that was because we were waiting for James Gunn To drop the massive DC announcement, and he did. So I didn't want to put out an episode last night and then all of a sudden have this big news drop and then wait a week to come at you guys, even though I do plan to record a quick bite and really dive into this DC announcement from James Gunn, which, by the way, part one of his chapter for the new DCU is titled Gods and Monsters, so that's why tonight's show is titled Of the Same because it is the biggest news of the week, of the month, really, and of the year so far, since we're just one month into 2023. So we're going to be talking about all the news from January 24th on up through today, January 31st, okay? Um, Plug-wise, I just talked about it, the Quick Bites. Am I on the air Quick Bites? Are you subscribed yet? It is a separate podcast feed, so make sure you look it up and you subscribe. They are Quick Bite episodes, which means they're only 10 minutes, 15 minutes, really no more than that. It's to get you in, get you out, but get you knowledgeable on something hot. And in the last two weeks, I've dropped three Quick Bite episodes. We did that 90s show review for the new Netflix series. We did the You People review for the new Jonah Hill, Eddie Murphy movie over on Netflix. And we released that like a week early before the movie even came out. So you guys should be listening to the Quick Bites. And we also did an episode talking about all the Oscar nominations for this year's ceremony. So three big episodes talking about movie reviews, talking about Oscars. So make sure you check out Am I on the Air Quick Bites. And, of course, we're going to be having another new episode here as we talk about um, the DCU and James Gunn's big announcement and really get into that. Like I said, I will talk about it tonight, but I'll probably spend more time diving in, giving a reaction to things uh, on the Quick Bite. That's what it's there for. Okay, Movie-wise, I don't really have any movie reviews for you guys this week, which is actually very rare for me, but it was uh, a dead week at the movie theater, and the only thing that came out that I wanted to check out was Shotgun Wedding, which was the new Jennifer Lopez, Josh Dumal rom-com action movie that came out on Prime Video. Unfortunately, the the weekend was super-duper busy, and I did not get a chance to watch it, so... I will probably check it out this weekend, uh, but that was the only thing even worth checking out, and I haven't seen much about it out on uh, Twitter or Facebook or anything. I've I've had one personal friend post on his Facebook that he saw it and he really liked it. That's it, that one person. So I don't know if a lot of people are checking out Shotgun Wedding. I thought it looked all right. You know, I'm a little over Jennifer Lopez and wedding movies. 
Um, but you know what? She surprises me from time to time. I actually really dug Marry Me, and I think, uh, and I like Josh Dumal, so I think this one does have potential with the action stuff. So we'll see how that one goes. But over on TV, got some really great things on TV, guys. Two new shows that came out that I am over the moon about. I want to take some time to talk about. The first one is called Shrinking. And this is a new show that is on Apple TV Plus and is the return of Jason Siegel. Love Jason Siegel, man, and pretty much everything he does. And this one also has Harrison Ford in it. And basically, they play therapist. And long story short, with the kind of premise for this, is that Jason Siegel's character, his wife had just uh, passed away from a hit and run accident, car crash. And, um, so he's struggling. He's struggling really bad. He's depressed. He's disconnected from his daughter. Um, and he's just trying to kind of find his way back. But he's a therapist, right? So people are going to him and preaching their problems. And he's like, oh, God, I really don't care, right? Like, he's just not in the mood for it. And one day, he kind of just decides to tell people what they really should do. Instead of being a therapist and just listening He says, you should leave your husband. You should go fight. You should go do this. You should go do that. And all of a sudden kind of finds it to be his new kind of way in, right? But this show, there's so much about this show because it's heartfelt, it's endearing, but it's super funny. And Jason Segel is hilarious. It's written by Brett Goldstein, who I love Brett Goldstein. Of course, he does... um, uh, Ted Lasso. God, I don't know why I was spacing on that, but yes, Ted Lasso. Um, and, uh, and it's also from the writer and creator of scrubs and uh, who had also helped start off with Ted Lasso as well. So, you know, that's, what's really, really cool here. Um, is that it has the right ingredients to it and seeing, uh, Harrison Ford in a role like this, uh, and all the cast members that we bumped into so far on this show are excellent. So the first two episodes have dropped on Apple TV plus new episodes every Friday, big thumbs up for me. I love it. Then I decided to check out another new show that just dropped this weekend over on Peacock. And this one is called poker face starring Natasha Leone. I didn't know what to expect with this one. Saw the trailer, saw it's from Ryan Johnson, right? And this is kind of in the vein of a knives out, right? It's a mystery. It's a, it's a, you know, crazy kind of story. Um, mystery crime thriller, you know? And, um, I love the trailer and I was like, I got to check this show out. The first four episodes have actually dropped on Peacock and I watched all four And I freaking love this show. This show is my show of the week. It's my show of the month. And I scream it to the rooftops that y'all need to check out Poker Face. If you don't have Peacock, get Peacock and watch Poker Face. This show is so good. And what I love about it is you have a story that starts off in episode one. And then episodes two, three, and four take place in totally different areas with the same character, but there's this story anthology type story that's told for that episode with an overarching story that stems from the first episode. It's really, really cool the way that they do it. And with each episode as almost like an anthology episode, you get guest stars. There's a lot of people that pop up in this thing. And then I saw the trailer for the following episodes Every episode is star studded and Natasha Leone was made for this role. She's so good. It's called poker face. Cause she's a character who has the ability and it's not really a special power. She's not gifted or anything, but she has the ability to read people's faces, read people's emotions. And she can tell right away if you're telling the truth or you're lying. And that really helps her kind of solve some crimes, right? Uh, in that knives out kind of way with Ryan Johnson behind the board here. Um, I absolutely love this thing and I'm telling you, you should watch it right away. Um, new episodes drop every week, but the first four, like I said, are already up. So there's four hours of enjoyment for you to get through. I love poker face. So big thumbs up for me on this one as well. Uh, I also watched the new Paramount plus original show. Wolfpack decided to give this one a chance. I know this is kind of a spinoff 
of the Teen Wolf franchise, which I did not watch. And this one here has uh, Sarah Michelle Gellar as basically the main star. And of course, there's these kids and someone's been bit and they're werewolves and we're going to go from there. Um, I don't know how I feel about this show yet. I was so, so on this first episode. There were moments where I was like, this is stupid and I should shut this off. And then there were also other moments that were kind of cool. So I need more. I, this wasn't enough of a sample size for me. So I'm going to give it a couple more episodes and see where it takes me. So Wolfpack, I'm kind of in the middle of right now, but that's on Paramount Plus. You can just watch the premiere episode right now with new episodes dropping weekly. I want to give a big thumbs up again to the last of us. Holy crap. This show is on episode three and continues to get better and better and better. Um, it's so good. It's so freaking good. This is one of the best shows on television. Um, and everyone's loving it. It's already been renewed for season two. It's the only HBO show that seems to grow an audience week to week. And that's amazing in its own right. So I just wanted to shout that out. Make sure you check out the last of us. And season two just dropped of How I Met Your Father over on Hulu. This is another show that I'm kind of just so-so on. Um, I like it because it's attached to How I Met Your Mother, which I really, really loved. This cast is not as good as that cast. And sometimes this show's hard to get through. I like Hilary Duff. I like what she's trying to do. Uh, and then they hit me with a little tease at the end of the episode, which makes me have to stick around. So you got me guys. Good job. But, uh, yeah, I just want to let you know season two is back and it's just still a little so-so for me at this moment. Um, and lastly, all I'm going to say is I'm currently watching you season four. And some of you might be saying, how the hell are you watching you season four? It hasn't come out yet. Well, that's because I'm a reviewer guys. And sometimes I get the glorious um, task to review stuff early. Now, unfortunately, I am under embargo from Netflix, which means I can't tell you what I think about it yet. Um, but I will be recording a review and it will be released as a quick bite episode uh, within the next couple days, depending on the embargo. Uh, as you know, you season four is being split into two parts. So the first five episodes will drop on February 9th with the following five episodes dropping March 9th. So it's part one and a part two. And I'm currently up to part two. I've already finished part one, and I'm in part two right now. And um, yeah, I can't wait to talk to you guys about it. But um, keep an eye out for the Quick Bite episode when we're able to record and get that out to you guys. I'm definitely very excited about that. All right, that's out the way. Let's get into our box office. And congratulations, first and foremost, to Avatar The Way of Water officially becoming the fourth biggest movie of all time. That means James Cameron has three of the top four movies in the box office of all time history. So congratulations there for Avatar The Way of Water that continues to break records, man, over and over and over again. Coming in number 10, it's Wandering Earth 2. Number 9 is Infinity Pool. Number 8 is Left Behind, Rise of the Architect. Number seven is Plain. Number six is Missing. Number five is Pathan. Number four is Megan. Number three is A Man Called Otto. Number two is Puss in Boots 2, The Last Wish. And number one, once again, with $620 million here in the U.S. and over $2.4 billion in uh, the world, Avatar The Way of Water, the fourth biggest movie of all time. Number one, once again, for the... How many weeks are we up to now? Seven weeks? Six or seven weeks in the box office? God damn. Whew. I don't know what's going to dethrone this thing, man. Will something catch it before Ant-Man and the Wasp? Quantumania? I don't know, man. I don't know how it will hang on. All right. Let's get into our news of the week. And should we start with the DC stuff? Nah, we're going to make you wait on that one. Let's get into it. Uh, Rick and Morty is going to continue, but without Justin Roiland. Adult Swim issued a statement. There's some uh, there's some stuff going on that doesn't look good for, uh, for Justin over here. So he's been booted, and they'll find some voice replacements to continue on Rick and Morty without him. Robert Kirkman says the uh, Invincible live-action movie is still in development. They are looking to make it happen. 
I know I would love to see it happen because it's hard for me to get into this damn cartoon, but I think it would make an amazing live action update. So I am ready for it. The Madonna biopic is no longer moving forward at Universal uh, Universal Pictures. Giancarlo Esposito has joined Francis Ford Coppola, his passion project Megalopolis that we've talked about. We were just talking a couple weeks about how much money this thing's costing, and now Giancarlo Esposito has joined the cast, so that is pretty cool there. Um, Girls Trip 2 officially confirmed. That's right, the main quartet of Regina Hall, Queen Latifah, Jada Pickett-Smith, and Tiffany Haddish are all set to return, so congratulations there. That's pretty awesome. The Lord of the Rings trilogy is coming to Netflix in February, for those of you looking for that to stream. Maya Hawk, Laura Linney, and more have joined Ethan Hawke's directorial debut, Wildcat. Violent Night 2 is in the works with the original creative team working on that one. Ben Affleck and Matt Damon's new Nike movie called Air is going to get a wide theatrical release, so that's awesome right there. Amazon Studios was doing this one, and it wasn't even going to go to theaters, and now it's getting a wide release, so that's big time right there. Uh, The Walking Dead's Michael Kudlitz has joined the cast of Superman and Lois as he's going to be playing Lex Luthor for Season 3. Wow, pretty damn cool there. Uh, American Primeval, Betty Gilpin, Dane DeHaan, and Jai Courtney have joined the limited Western series. We have the trailer for The Boogeyman, which is the new horror movie from Stephen King. Looks pretty cool. I kind of dig it. I always like the, the Boogeyman theory. Um, Megan, like I said, came out on digital last week, so you can now rent it or buy it on VOD. So make sure you check that out. Um, Andy Circus, along with Greg Berlanti, are teaming for a new Oliver Sacks drama over at NBC. Um, once again, the full Oscar nominations came out and we did that quick bite episode, giving you all the specifics. So I won't go over it here, but make sure you check out the quick bite episode. If you want to hear about it all, we have the new Bel Air season two trailer. It comes back February 23rd on, on Peacock. I'm very excited about this. I loved Bel Air. I thought it was an awesome show and I'm very excited for season two. So get ready for that. Once again, February 23rd on Peacock. Um, did you watch you people yet on Netflix? I'm going to shout that out again. Cause I know I reviewed it a week early, but I implore you to watch it. I thought it was hilarious and think it's uh, really, really good. I give it four out of five stars. So make sure you check that one out. Titans and doom patrol are ending with their season fours on HBO max. I had a feeling this was coming even before the DC announcement from James Gunn with the whole universe being tied into TV, video games, live action, I just had a feeling these shows would not go on. James Gunn has come out and said basically like he has nothing to do with this cancellation, but we know it would have happened regardless. Um, I love Titans. I love it so much. I think it's such an awesome show. It's so great to see Nightwing and Beast Boy and Starfire and Raven like all in live action. It's super, super cool. Um, Doom Patrol, I like also, but I don't like it as much as Titans because Doom Patrol is fucking weird and all over the place. (laughs) Um, and sometimes it's a little too much to get into. Um, but you know, it is a hit for DC. It does suck that these are two big shows I watch on HBO max and they are currently streaming season four right now. So that means they will be wrapping with the current season. So not like a one more and we're done. This is, this is going to be over. When these shows wrap up, Uncle Teen F- Hunger Force season 12 has been announced. That's right, ahead of Plantasm HBO Max release. So the Aqua Teen Hunger Force is headed back for another season, uh, as the original creators have announced. So, congratulations there. I never watched this damn cartoon, but I know a lot of people really liked it. Extraordinary is getting a season two order, and that's prior to to the series premiere, and that's going to be over at Disney Plus. So uh, very interesting there, man. Uh, Extraordinary getting season two. Daisy Jones and the Six. We have the teaser trailer for Riley Coe's uh, new Prime miniseries that she did. New Line Cinema has officially nabbed the Barbarian director's next horror movie, officially titled Weapons. The Razzies officially apologized after nominating a minor for worst actress. They issued a statement and they now have an 18 and up 
rules. So no more nominating a 12 year old. So good job, Razzies. Good job. Ray Stevenson is set to replace Kevin Spacey in 1242 gateway to the West gladiator Two filming has been delayed a little bit for the Paul Mescal led sequel. Um, they are still looking to shoot this year, but um, they were hoping to get started in the next month or two. And it looks like it's been slightly delayed. Neil Gaiman talking about uh, Dead Boy Detectives over on HBO Max. It is still coming. It is still greenlit. Um, so he says it is safe for the time being. So we'll see if we end up getting Dead Boy Detectives. Bob Hart Abishola earns a early season five renewal over at CBS. So congratulations there. Um, Frasier Revival has added two new people to the cast, including Niles and Daphne's son. Hulu, like all, like we already talked about, they have officially cut ties with Justin Roiland over domestic violence charges, Solar Opposites, and Koala Man will continue, but without his involvement. Um, Kristen Bell, McKenna Grace, and Lil Rel Howery have boarded the Paw Patrol sequel, Paw Patrol, the Mighty Movie. <laughs> All right, Paw Patrol, Paw Patrol. We have the brand new Shazam Fury of the Gods trailer that finally dropped because it's been a long time, man. It's about time we got a second trailer for Shazam 2. Uh, Hits theaters March 17th. New trailer is awesome, so make sure you take a peek at that one there. We have the new trailer for Party Down, which comes back on February 24th over on Stars. So make sure you check that that out. That's another revival series that's going on. Marvel's Thunderbolts have added Ao Itabiri to the cast, um, best known for her role in The Bear. Milf Manor is a reality TV series that's coming. Uh, yes, I'm not joking. Um, but um, I'm hoping, I didn't read into this because I just don't care enough, but I'm hoping this is like a spoof. This is like a comedy show. Milf Manor, I mean, if they're trying to take themselves seriously, uh, I just give up on humanity. But uh, I'm guessing this is kind of like a spoofy version of it. We'll see. Uh, Disney Plus series has added Poseidon and Zeus to the cast. Phoebe Waller-Bridge is set to produce an Amazon series adaptation called Sign Here. Um, Succession Season 4, we have the teaser trailer that you can check out. Uh, Lady Gaga has begun filming for her Joker 2 role. We have the new 65 trailer with Adam Driver. We have the new trailer for We Have a Ghost, which is Anthony Mackie and David Harbour's new comedy that's coming late February over on Netflix. Uh, Gotham Knights have cast real-life couple to play Clue Master and Crystal Brown. That's right. Uh, let me see here. Who did we end up getting for this? Um, Ethan Embry and Sonny Mabry. Uh, have been tapped for reoccurring roles in the CW's upcoming DC series, Gotham Knights, as they're set to play Gotham celebrity couple Arthur and Crystal Brown, who are parents of Anna Lore's Stephanie Brown. So there you go there. I'm actually not familiar with these characters whatsoever. Um, Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, I'm James Lovino, and I'm here to tell you about Alternate Sides, a movie podcast with a twist. I've worked in the film business for two decades, but I haven't actually seen that many movies, and this has been driving my frequent collaborator, Saab, a self-confessed film snob, crazy. So every week, while he's stuck in his car trying to avoid getting a parking ticket, thanks to New York City's alternate side parking regulations, we discuss a classic film I've finally just gotten around to seeing, Alternate Sides, a new podcast about movies, parking, and a 25-year friendship, wherever you get your podcasts. Stranger Things and Encanto have rise to the top of the 2022 streaming charts. Stranger Things was the most streamed show of 2022, and Encanto was the most streamed movie of 2022. Very, very interesting there. Um, the directors of Scream 6 promise a raw and gritty sequel. I have a feeling they're going to do something really cool with this one. I'm very, very excited about it. The Stephen King remake of Children of the Corn has been acquired by Shudder. So that's where you'll be able to see that one. Congratulations to The Recruit that's been renewed for season two over on Netflix. Um, we have the trailer for The Strays, which is a new um, drama, thriller, crazy looking movie, actually, coming February 22nd to Netflix. 
Uh, February 24th will be um, the uh, We Have a Ghost movie that we just talked about with Anthony Mackie and David Harbour. So that's going to be hitting February 24th. The Walking Dead final season is now streaming on Netflix. The Simpsons, Bob Burgers, and Family Guy have all been renewed for two more seasons over on Fox, man. Congratulations there. They love their animated stuff. That's pretty awesome. Pedro Pascal is going to make his SNL hosting debut in February, so that's going to be awesome. Um, Cancellation Jitters. We have an article up with 13 shows that are in limbo across all your favorite channels like ABC, CBS, Fox, NBC, and the CW. Where do they stand? Where are we going? We'll let you know, so check out that post. Blake Lively and Justin Baldoni are set to star in Sony's It Ends With Us adaptation. Nisi Nash, John Bernthal, and Vera Farmiga have joined Ava DuVernay's new film adaptation of Cast. Uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Speaking of Phoebe Waller bridge, she is set to write a new tomb Raider TV series. And it doesn't stop. There is Amazon. This is going to be going to Amazon prime and prime looking to be getting into the tomb Raider universe as not only are they doing the TV series, they're looking to make a new tomb Raider movie as well. So very interesting there. Uh, Oscar-nominated director is set to helm Ellen Pompeo's new miniseries of Orphan. Russell Crowe debunks any rumors that he's going to be in Gladiator 2. (laughs) Uh, Last of Us officially renewed for season two. We talked about that after just two episodes. The Last of Us got renewed, and that is pretty damn awesome. James Cameron praising the 4K remaster of Titanic ahead of its re-release. So, yes, the 25th anniversary of Titanic is coming. It'll be hidden back in theaters in a brand new, beautiful 4K remaster. Still waiting for that 4K remaster of Avatar to hit um, Voodoo so I can buy it. I want it in 4K, James. We know it's available now because I watched it in September. Let's go. William Defoe is joining the Lighthouse director's next thriller, Nosferatu. The Hulu still hasn't decided if they're going to bring the Orville back for season four or not. So, still on the fence there. Nicole Kidman and Maya Erskine are set to lead HBO's new limited series, The Perfect Nanny. Um, Let's see here. Peacock has officially scrapped Dead Day adaptation from Kevin Williamson and Julie Pleck. Despite the fact that they had already ordered it to series, they're backing up on that one. Amazon, like I said, is building a Tomb Raider franchise. Sources say that the streamer has plans for a feature film in addition to the newly announced TV series from Phoebe Waller-Bridge and at least one video game with the goal of having them all be connected. So very cool there. We'll see what happens with that. Um, Let's see. We talked about that. We talked about that. Impractical Jokers is coming back. Super excited about this. Season 10 of Impractical Jokers coming back to True TV and TBS starting February 9th uh, with all new celebrity guests. So very, very cool there. Uh, One of my favorite shows, man. If you've never watched Impractical Jokers, look it up and watch it because it's awesome. Uh, Marvel DV Plus uh, Disney Marvel Disney Plus series has added Jonah Zhao to a lead role in it, uh, even though they're not saying what series it is. All we know is that she's been added to a Marvel Disney Plus series. Peacock is developing a comedy drama set in ancient Egypt that will be called Cleo. Um, we have the trailer for Star Trek Picard, the third season, um, which everybody's very excited about because the whole Next Generation cast is back. Uh, and some sad news, Annie Wershing has passed away at the age of 45 uh, from cancer, which is very, very sad. Um, I knew her mainly as one of the moms in The Runaways over on Hulu, so she definitely got her little spot in the Marvel world. Uh, she was on Timeless. She was on 24. She was on Bosch. She did a lot of work, and she was a really great actress, and it's just very, very sad to hear of her passing. So uh, thoughts and prayers out to her family and friends. 911 will be collaborating once again with 911 Lone Star. Their next crossover may not be obvious, but it is coming. So very interesting way to word it there. The Mysterious Benedict Society officially canceled to Disney Plus after just two seasons. Um, Julia Roberts and Jennifer Aniston have a body swap comedy that they're going to be doing. And it's going to be coming to Prime. So 
pretty interesting there. Amazon Studios picking up this one as well, too. A body swap pick based on the original pitch by Max Barbacow uh, will write and direct and produce the movie. Uh, it is untitled currently, but I like that. Jennifer Aniston and uh, Julia Roberts. Okay, okay, let's go. Uh, Fox is giving Roseanne Barr's comedy comeback special Cancel This an NFL boost. That's right. So very cool there for Roseanne getting the big boost over on Fox. Uh, the Boogeyman, again, that new trailer dropped. It hits theaters June 2nd. D- uh, don't forget, tomorrow on Disney+, Plus, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever will officially be streaming. We have the brand new trailer, first trailer actually, for Murder Mystery 2. That's right, the Adam Sandler, Jennifer Aniston movie. They are back once again in the sequel you didn't even remember was even happening. Uh, is coming, man. Murder Mystery 2 coming to Netflix March 31st. Looks pretty fun though, man. I, I like the first Murder Mystery. Didn't love it, but I liked it. And uh, this one looks like they definitely amped up the budget a little bit. And it looks, it looks like a lot of fun. Um... Paramount Plus is going to merge with Showtime. They've already kind of included Showtime into the formatting, but officially this summer it will be rebranded. It'll be called Paramount Plus with Showtime because that's such a cool rebranding name. I hope somebody didn't get paid a lot of money for that one. Um, But yes, it'll be merged. So if you have the $5 version of Paramount Plus, you will not get Showtime. If you have what they're calling the premium tier, which is the $9.99 without ads, which is like what I have, that will include Showtime, which is pretty cool because right now I have the $9.99 and I don't have Showtime. I'd have to pay like an additional $5 add-on to get Showtime. So it's pretty cool that they're going to just include that for the $9.99 price because honestly, if you get Showtime by itself, it's like 11 or 12 bucks a month. So why would you not do it with Paramount Plus for $9.99 a month and you get the ad-free version? This sounds like a big, big win. I'm excited about it. So Paramount Plus and Showtime merging this year. Um, Michael Jackson's nephew is set to play the King of Pop in the biopic. That's right. Jafar Jackson has been cast to play his uncle Michael in the Anton Fuqua forthcoming biopic drama. So very cool there because we were talking about that. We were talking about casting and we were saying, who the hell is going to play Michael Jackson? And now we know his nephew is going to. And I think that's pretty damn cool, man. So congratulations there. I like that. The Jim Parsons movie, spoiler alert, is coming to Netflix. I'm sorry, not Netflix. It's coming to Peacock uh, in February. So keep an eye out for that. Will Smith reportedly set to return as the genie for Aladdin 2. So I love that because you ain't never met a friend like me. Um, (laughs) The Vernon Shirley star, Cindy Williams, has passed away at the age of 75. So very, very sad to hear with that. Um, definitely thoughts and prayers out once again, I hate reporting murder or murders deaths on this show. Um, it is always very, very sad to discuss the queen's gambit season two is not moving forward. So that is going to be a one and done. Jason Bateman is set to helm a historical detective drama for Warner brothers called the Pinkerton, uh, power book Two ghost has been renewed for season four. I love this news. I love this show. And Michael Ely is going to be joining the cast. I love that. He's going to play a detective. Love Michael Ely. This is a great addition to ghost. And I'm very excited about that. Showtime has officially canceled American gigolo and let the right one in. I am bummed about let the right one in because I really like that show. And that sucks that it got canceled after just one season. I tried to watch American gigolo and could not even get past one episode. So not bummed about that one, but definitely always sucks to see shows canceled. Um, Oh yeah. Kindred speaking of canceled has been canceled over at Hulu reboot has been canceled at Hulu as well. This one pisses me off. I love Reboot. This is one of the funniest shows of the year, and you've canceled it? Come on, Hulu. You definitely disappoint me on that one. Um, All right. We got some big news earlier today that Bad Boys 4 is going into pre-production. Will Smith, Martin Lawrence confirmed to return. This excites me so much. I love the Bad Boys movies. Bad Boys 2 is one of my all-time favorite films. I really liked Bad Boys for Life that came out a couple years ago. Um, And now we're going to get a fourth one. 
Uh, a really cool TikTok came out this morning with Will Smith, really excited, saying, come with me, you're going to love this news. And then he knocks on the door, and Martin Lawrence opens the door, and he's like, are we doing this? And he's like, we're doing this. And they're all excited, and it made me excited. And, and dude, I love bad boys. So bad boys for life. Let's go shake a tail feather. We're going to be getting another one. The same directors from Bad Boys for Life coming back to direct this one as well, too. So big, big news. I love it. Um, James Gunn says that he's seen the flash and it's fucking amazing. It's one of the best superhero movies that I've ever seen. Andy Muschietti did an amazing job and I'm really excited for everyone to see it. So big, big kudos from James Gunn about the flash movie that we've all been wondering about. And that gets me really excited because if James Gunn's saying it's one of the best superhero movies ever, dude, that's high, high praise. So we'll see how that one plays out. Um, Okay, are you all ready for the DC news? I guess we could talk about it. Uh, One thing that came out of the DC announcement is that Superman and Lois, the TV show, is likely to end after maybe one, maybe even two more seasons. Uh, But they are going to be wrapping that one up because, of course, the TV shows will tie into the DCU, and that's not their Superman. So, um, yes, they're going to probably let it play out maybe one or two more seasons because we're probably still... You know, we're not getting the new Superman until 2025. So in theory, you could get, you know, a season that's in 2023 to 2024, 24, 24 to 25, maybe even a truncated season. So we'll see where that goes. All right, let's get into it. Like I said, James Gunn came out. He actually posted a video version of this as well, too. And I did put it up on our Twitter page so you can check it out. It's about a six minute video where he talks about a lot of this stuff. Uh, and I'm going to do my quick bite. So my quick bite would be better than James Gunn's announcement for sure. Um, But he announced uh, the first 10 film and TV titles within the rebooted DC universe. Um, Like I said, he announced parts of chapter one, which they're calling gods and monsters. And once again, he says, this isn't all of chapter one. This is just some of chapter one that he was willing to announce. So very interesting there. So let's talk about it. What do we got, man? We have on the movie side, We have the new Superman movie. We knew this was coming. It's being written by James Gunn. It's called Superman Legacy. Will we have an official uh, um, release date? July 11th, 2025 will be Superman Legacy. And it's the official start of the DCU. Even though some of this other stuff is going to weave in and weave out, this is the official start. Um, And he says it'll focus on Superman balancing his Kryptonian heritage with his human upbringing. Uh, so, um, we'll dive in more, like I said, on the quick bite. Then we have a movie called the authority, which what the fuck is the authority? <laughs> this is, this is how I was going through this announcement today. I was like, Ooh, what? Ooh, what? Like it's, it's like, so James Gunnish to pop this weird ass shit on us. Right. Um, not that it won't be cool, because that's what look at Guardians of the Galaxy. I think we all said, what the fuck is this, right? A tree and a raccoon, and look how awesome it is. So the authority nobody really knows about. Um, but he's really excited to bring it to life. The characters come from Wildstorm, which was launched in 1992. Um, and they will weave in with the overall big DCU. Um, it's a story of heroes and villains, and not every movie and TV show is going to be about good versus bad. Uh, There are people that are questionable, like the authority who basically believe that you can't fix the world in an easy manner and they take things into their own hands. Sounds kind of like the boys, right? So we'll see how that goes. We have the brave and the bold. That's right. This is the DCU's version of Batman, and it's going to be a Batman and Robin movie. That's right, with Robin being Damian Wayne. So it's going to be a father-son type of movie um, where basically Bruce didn't know that he had a kid, right? And then when he does meet him, he's a little uh, son of a bitch and he's an assassin. He's a murderer. Um, and they have to work together. Um, but he also said that you're going to see the extended bat family in this as well, too. So friggins, I think we're going to see Nightwing in this movie. I think we might see Batgirl. Um, there's, you know, that's really cool because this kind of opens up the Batman world that obviously has been around for at least 10 years, if not more. Um, if we have Damien running around, so everybody else is kind of, I know a lot of people are bummed that it's not Dick Grayson, but it sets you up for a spot where he could just come in as Nightwing and we could still have a Robin. So the brave and the bold is on the agenda. 
Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow is another movie that's on the agenda based on the comic series run. Um, Woman of Tomorrow features Superman's cousin, Kara Zor-El, uh, who is a very different type of Supergirl. Uh, we see the difference between Superman, who was sent to Earth and raised by loving parents from the time he was an infant, versus Supergirl, who was raised on a rock chip off Krypton and watched everyone around her die and be killed in terrible ways for the first 14 years of her life. Um, this Supergirl is much more hardcore. Um, so, very interesting. And then the last movie is going to be Swamp Thing. Yes, we're going to dive into this again. This was a TV series a couple years ago, uh, but... I believe in this one more with gun behind it. Um, but yes, we're going to get Swamp Thing. So we're going to have the horror element in the DCU. And we'll see where that takes us uh, overall. On the TV side, we're getting Creature Commandos, which is going to be an animated series uh, that I just don't understand the why behind it. Then we're going to get Waller, which of course is going to be based on Amanda Waller. And he confirmed... He confirmed... That once again, Viola Davis is going to be playing Amanda Waller. So, very interesting where we're starting to see the cherry picking, right? Is it a full reboot? What are we doing over here? Viola Davis getting to come back um, as we get the Amanda Waller show um, over on HBO Max. Um, So, that'll be interesting. Then we're going to get Lanterns which is, of course, the Green Lantern series. And this is not the one we've been talking about for the last couple of years. That is dead. That is scrapped. Lanterns is going to be a huge HBO quality event that is very much in the vein of True Detective. It will focus on Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart um, trying to solve a mystery that will tie into the bigger DCU. And then we're going to have Paradise Lost, which is a Wonder Woman prequel series set on Themyscira. I uh, don't know why we need this. I really, really don't. And then we're going to get Booster Gold. I love this one. Booster Gold is somebody we would love to see in live action for a while. Of course, he's the time traveler uh, coming back and uh, trying to show that he's better than he really is. Uh, so this is going to be a fun, fun one. But yes, Booster Gold is on the agenda. So that's what you're getting in the new DCU Over the course of the next several years Like I said, it doesn't really even kick off till 2025 So it's going to be quite some time And I'm sure we'll find out a lot more There are no directors There are no casting announcements made Just the projects that they are willing to talk about Like I said, this is not the full chapter one slate This is just a piece of it Okay, there you go That is it in a nutshell They also announced that some of the movies will be called DC Elseworlds. That'll be the new label that is slapped on those movies. So you'll know right away if you see DC Elseworlds that it does not connect to the DCU. Things like the Batman 2, um, the new Joker sequel, Teen Titans Go. That stuff is not a part of the DCU, so it'll have the Elseworlds logo on it. We also found out the release date for the Batman Part 2, which will come out on October 3rd, 2025. So we're getting that sequel and the new Superman in 2025, which is really, really interesting. Um, We have the new poster for Fast X, and you can check that out uh, with the trailer premiering on February 10th. Uh, Peter Safran says WB made a bold and courageous decision to cancel Batgirl. He says it definitely would have hurt DC if they had put it out. I still find it hard to believe that it was that bad. Jesus Christ. Um, but that's what they're saying. Tom Hanks and Robin Wright will be DH for Robert Zemeckis' upcoming movie called Here. Five Night at Freddy's movie has added Mary Stuart Masterson to the uh, roster. King of the Hill revival is officially a go, and Hulu has issued a statement over there on that. Eddie Murphy is open to a Shrek 5 or a Donkey spinoff movie. Um, So that's pretty awesome there. We have first look photos at Swarm, which is Donald Glover's Beyonce-inspired series that he's doing for Amazon Prime. Bridgerton Season 3, Phoebe Dineever is exiting the Netflix series. She will not be back. A Simple Favor 2 is headed into production for the Amazon Prime sequel. Still very excited about this one, man. Blake Lively and Anna Kedrick coming back for this. Dexter New Blood. Of course, Dexter came back last year, which was awesome because Dexter is one of my favorite shows. When New Blood ended, a lot of people were waiting to hear, are we going to get a sequel series? Are we going to get something more? 
They are saying it will not move forward. No more Dexter New Blood. It is done. But Showtime is considering doing a prequel series that focuses on a younger Dexter. So that might be pretty cool. So we'll see um, where that takes us. It looks like even though the movie hasn't come out yet, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey is moving forward with a sequel and is drawing inspiration from Terrifier 2. So take that for what you will. Uh, More Showtime shows have been canceled, including Kidding, Super Pumped, and On Becoming a God in Central Florida. Those have all been moved off the roster on Showtime. And it looks like they're going to be removed from the streamer as well. As just like HBO Max did, they're going to shop those around to like Roku and Tubi and Freebie and all that kind of stuff so they can make some more revenue there. Uh, Speaking of the HBO Max stuff, their stuff is going to go to Tubi and Roku. (laughs) So there you go. John Wick Chapter 4, Keanu Reeves says the next level action in the upcoming entry was the hardest physical role he's ever had to do. He says that John Wick Chapter 4 is the most action they've ever done in a John Wick movie, which is pretty crazy to hear. Uh, So I love that. Dr. Phil is set to end this year after 21 seasons. You're going to get a new spinoff of The Good Wife. It'll be centered on Carrie Preston's Elsbeth Tesconi, and it has scored a CBS pilot order. A Sherlock-less Watson versus Moriarty series is in the works at CBS. Why? I do not know. A Matlock reboot is starring Kathy Bates, and the pilot order has been uh, ordered over at CBS. That's right, Kathy Bates will play the title character in the Matlock reboot. Peacock officially ending their free tier for customers as they shift their focus to paid plans. So make sure you are paying for that shit. Um, The free ad supported tier will be no longer available to new customers. La Brea is getting uh, season three renewal. So congratulations over there at NBC. Johnny Knoxville slamming uh, the reboot cancellation is pretty unbelievable as he shades Hulu for its lack of support. Yeah, man. Tell him, Johnny. I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, Let's see here. Just kind of some more notes on the DC stuff on a couple of the shows. Lanterns, like I said, will star Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart. It's going to be on HBO Max with a more of a true detective type mystery uh, coming for it. The Game of Thrones-like DCU show about Themyscira is in development for HBO Max. That's the one that's called Paradise Lost. Um, And uh, let's see. The events will take place before Diana's birth, by the way. So there you go. Um, Supergirl is a much harsher and more fucked up Supergirl than we've been used to so far. That's what James Gunn noted on that. Um Let's see here. And then the Batman movie, right? The Brave and the Bold. It's going to be a father-son story. This is a story of Damian Wayne, who is Batman's actual son, who he didn't know existed for the first eight to ten years of his life. He was raised as a little murderer and assassin. Uh, It'll feature all the most members of the extended Bat family. Um, And then, like I said, John Wick Chapter 4 is the most action by a good margin. And that is saying a lot. And on that note, we are done with the show. Man, we still had 46 minutes and we didn't even have a movie review. That's crazy. Well, you know what? The DC stuff did take some time. But once again, keep an eye out for the Am I on the Air Quick Bites. I do want to break down the DC stuff in a little bit more detail. So keep an eye out for that. But that is it for tonight's show. Thank you so much for joining me and getting caught up with all the latest and the greatest. Am I on the Air.com is our official webpage. Make sure you bookmark that. Make sure you like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash am I on the air. Follow us on Twitter at am I on the air. Follow me on Twitter at DX Don Mega. Make sure you subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts. Leave us a five-star review. If Apple's not your thing, get us on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Spreaker Stitcher, TuneIn, Pandora, Amazon Music. We're on everything. Just search am I on the air. And please give us a thumbs up, a like, stars, whatever you can do. It really, really helps, especially if you could type out a review. That would be amazing. Uh, It really, 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 really helps. Check us out on all the social medias, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. Make sure you follow everything at Simply Am I on the Air. Thank you to our great affiliates at RedDragonsRadio.com. Follow on Twitter at RedDragonsRadio. The Pop Culture Pros. Follow on Twitter at PopCulture underscore pros. 
And that'll do it for me tonight. Once again, on this January the 31st, we are already a month into 2023. Tomorrow is February. A couple weeks away from, uh, hey man, the Wasp Quantumania. Getting real excited for that. Um, and then this weekend, it's Knock at the Cabin. I'm very, very excited about that one as well, too. So I'll be seeing that on Friday. So lots of stuff to talk about next week. Take care of yourselves and each other. And until next time, y'all. Peace. Bye, everybody. Thank you for listening. Red Dragons! Red Dragons!